Hello, hello, hello. Open your Bibles to Ephesians 6. And while you're turning there, I want to read the scripture that I shared last week in Ecclesiastics 118. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. So I kind of put my own words in there. Definition for in much wisdom or much discernment, when you find out what's true and what's not true, is much grief or much sadness, suffering and pain. And he that increases knowledge increases sorrow or disappointment, unhappiness, sadness and heartache. Because sometimes it's hard to handle the truth. Truth doesn't come as a sweet, innocent little package. As we see Jesus, he just let you have it. <laughs> he just spoke the truth, he said, watch out, beware of the leaven of the, the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And then he called out what he called out. And some loved it and some hated it. And that's the way it's gonna be. Some are gonna love truth, seekers of truth, and others are going to reject the truth. So you have to make a decision in your own life. Are you going to love truth even when it hurts? Or even when we were wrong? We thought something was God and now we had to relearn things. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6. And I just encourage everyone to read the whole chapter by themselves. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may be well with thee and that thou mightest live long on the earth. And then it talks about what the fathers are supposed to do. You're not supposed to make your children angry. Don't provoke them to anger, but bring them up in the nurture in the admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling and singleness of your heart as unto the Lord, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free, in other words, you do all these things unto the Lord, he's going to repay you. The people that you're doing it to might not, but God will. He will repay you. Whatsoever good thing you do, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And you masters, you bosses that are in charge of people, do the same things unto them. Forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. We're not supposed to be strong in ourselves, Like a lot of us have been raised, just say the right words, decree and declare and all this. You just No, we're supposed to, we missed the point. That was kind of humanistic. We're supposed to be strong in the Lord. Lean on him and in the power of his might. We're not in this alone. He's with us. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Wiles means to lead astray. The enemy wants to lead us astray from the truth. He wants to uh, manipulate. And how would he do this? By transforming himself into an angel of light. And the Bible says so are his ministers also transformed as angels of light. So we have to be careful in these end times that no man deceive us. Take heed that no man deceive us, deceive us because in these end times, great deception is here, the wiles of the enemy. And the wiles means traps, errors, deception. He's a liar. He's been a liar from the beginning. In the Greek, wiles means deceitful schemes. Today we could call it gaslighting tell you one thing, but really they're playing you, manipulating you. Crafty strategies. This is all wiles. To lead away from the truth. 
And that's what the enemy wants to do, is to lead us away from the truth. And that's why we have to put on the full armor of God. And he goes into what the full armor of God here is. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. We got to keep the truth before us. We got to keep the truth before our eyes. The word of God is truth. Comes back to truth. Can you handle truth? Can you speak the truth? To stand, we're going to have to have our loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Beware of extremists that want war, that want to attack anyone that's different than them. That's not the gospel of peace. That's a false light. Above all, take the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I want to continue from last week and we're going to go into some more on what I believe is coming in the days ahead what the Bible says and what also people are telling us, what they tell about themselves. We're now in the fourth industrial revolution. In the first one, the first revolution, they used water and steam. The second one, they used electric power to create mass production. The third one, the third revolution, they used electronics and technology. In the fourth that we're in now, we've been in, we'll be in, Builds on the third, electronics and technology. And I want to talk about the technology that we're facing and what's coming. And what the Bible says, uh, as we enter in these new seasons, uh, I want you to all be aware we have to keep watching, keep praying. Don't get comfortable. Keep studying, keep watching, keep praying, stay alert. The fourth now, the, they're building on the third, the digital revolution. A change, in their words, in the way we live, the way we work, and the way we relate to one another by technology. We're entering and have been in, but we're going to really enter a new age of digital, physical, and biological systems as they come together and they unite. Uh, I was gonna do a whole thing today on biometrics, but I didn't quite get there. Maybe next week. We'll touch on it just briefly. But this is what will, uh, the future will be, just like the Bible says it will be as we close out on this. But technology, it improves how you interact with the world. Not all technology has been bad. Not all progress has been bad. We like technology, but some will take it too far in the future. And some of the times when they tell you what's coming, it's already here. We just don't know it yet. But when they let us know, it's been around. Technology improves how you interact with the world. Cell phones, you can call people all over the world. Cars medical equipment, computers, robots. From the first wheel to artificial intelligence. And we're going into the artificial intelligence age of surveillance. It influences how you communicate, how you travel, you work, and now how we are entertained. That can go in many, many levels. We have information technology, which is hardware and software. We have communication technology, which is the telegraph to the smartphone, on and on, communications. 
We rely on the internet to stay in touch with family and with friends. We have transportation technology from the wheel to the electric vehicles, cars, trains, airplanes, drones, flying cars. We have medical technology from x-rays to robotic surgeries. We have a huge social impact as a result of all this. Now people just test text message. I remember the first time I got a text message from my daughter-in-law years ago, and I was insulted. I'm like, why isn't she talking to me? She just sent me this message. We had to get used to it. Now if people call you, you go, what do they want? Why don't they text, right? Social impact, video calls, meetings online. It can be good. But there's also some problems with all this technology. Face-to-face -face relationships are lacking, with more people feeling lonely, isolated, and depressed because they don't have people to talk to. And now the younger generation, a lot of them, I saw this firsthand, where this boy lived on a lake, and just, you know, our desire always to be on the lake by water whatever he lived there and he never wanted to come outside because he was always playing games he was always on the internet and their grandparents could not get their grandson to leave his house all of a sudden it affects your brain and then you don't want to talk to people you just want to be on the internet more and more and more it's an addiction we're finding out and here's some challenges Oh, the big word, data, data, data. Data is the new oil. And privacy concerns are at an all-time high. Who owns this data? How will this data be used? Who's responsible when a self-driving car crashes? Or when the algorithms make a bad decision? How will this impact jobs? What about our privacy? Now we have things that hear everything we say. You can tell by the advertisements that they put on your phone and your iPad. All of a sudden, uh, wow, these rhythms are showing us what we like, how we should shop, right? What about our privacy? How far should we go? with this pursuit of progress. Surveillance, surveillance, surveillance. Surveillance will be in the air, it's on the air, the land, and the sea. Monitoring everything. Well, that can't be bad, can it? Well, it depends upon whose hands it's in, right? And the Bible says in Ephesians 6 here, we're in a war. The problem is people don't realize that we're in a war. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. And Satan is the god of this world. So as Christians, we have to stay alert. So we have some warnings of the new age. It's a new chapter in human development and to rethink what it means to be human. Now we have the technocrats and we have the future Futurists and the future shock I shared last week of how they want to go beyond man and bring in machines with man to take them into a different place, probably than most people can even fathom of the plans they have. Again, a quote from Albert Einstein, I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction the world will have a generation of idiots. They want transhumanism. Man and machine. They want to improve on what God made. They want you smarter. They want you stronger. They want you to live longer. And some futurists don't ever want to die. They want you to pass beyond human nature and have stronger minds and live, some want to live forever, 
it's funny they don't even agree amongst their own technocrats and futuristic people. Some don't want to live forever. Some do. Uh, they want life extension through bionic implants and cognitive enhancements. And it's already happening. Bionic means superhuman strength, powers, and capabilities. Remember the bionic man? Wasn't it the $6 million man? He'd probably be worth $40 million now. Who knows? But pre-programming shows you, wow, we just thought that was just kind of a cool old series, you know? A Japanese futurist produced a manifesto in 1960, and he suggests suggests that everyone will have a brainwave receiver in his ear, which conveys directly and exactly what other people think about him, and vice versa, to read other people's thoughts. Do you think you want to? He said, to continue his manifesto, what I think will be known by all the people. They will know what you're thinking. They will know how you feel about things. They're already monitoring you and us on what we read, what we post, what we like. All this data, like I said, data is the new oil, is being collected. Profiling, it's part of the new system. They will know more about you than you know about yourself. What I think will be known by all the people, there's no more individuality, he says, but the will of mankind as a whole for the greater good. They're basically wanting to redo humans and basically reject what God made and reject anything about God and make all these different things, which the Bible tells us is going to happen. Now, 1985, this is by a transhumanist advocate. He said, the dream of artificial intelligence is you awake one morning to find your brain has another lobe functioning with information beyond your own memory. You are enhanced beyond human with no mental and physical barriers. There's no limit. You can become a genius. Progress that changes human beings and enhances them, still quoting him, and it changes them. Not what you do, but who you are. Who have we heard that from just lately on the forums? They talk about it. 23% of the transhumanists surveyed out of uh, 818 didn't want immorality. They wanted to die. Some want to live forever. They didn't want to live forever because they thought boredom, they'd get bored, or the earth's already overpopulated, and some said they desired to go to an afterlife. So they're not even in agreement. There's different sects and different things. The U.S. Department of Defense like the advantages that would provide to the super soldiers of the U.S. and its allies. Military scientists, <clears throat> trust me, there's a lot of stuff we have no idea that's going on, are looking at stretching the human capacity for combat to a maximum of 168 hours without sleep. The CEO of Nokia says that by 2030, smartphones will be obsolete. The technology will, will be built directly into the physical body. Now, 2030 is a date. We've talked a lot about the sustainable goals. I've told you these goals are bipartisan. These goals march forward. And they want technology inside you. Well, what does the Bible say? And I have this idol, uh, article, I'm just going to share a little bit on it. It's uh, Biometrics, Similarities to Biblical Prophecy. This was written in 2009. And I'm just going to take little parts of it. But he said, to many Christians, biometric identification, what's that mean? See, a lot of people don't know what these terms mean. 
that means facial recognition, fingerprint imaging, hard vein recognition, and there's your voice. There's different ways that they can map out a person and tell you who they are. Could be accurately described as an enrollment process for the mark of the beast. Is this the mark of the beast? I believe this is what he said here. It's an enrollment. We're starting to see things. We have seen things. People thought, oh, the credit card's the mark of the beast, you know, and they freak out. And Oh, the television's the mark of the beast, and oh, they freak out. It's things happening little by little. It doesn't happen overnight, and we're going to see changes, I believe, in our own lifetimes here. Uh, the next few years as they bring in the golden age. Revelation 13, 16 is a scripture. We'll read that in a second. But the biometric ID at the minimum represents an end to freedom. Say, so why is that? Because everything will be monitored and controlled, a tool of persecution and the creation of a surveillance society. What does the book of Revelation say in 13? And he causes all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free men, the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one should be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of man, and his number is 666. And then in Revelations 14, 9, if anyone worships, now here's the key word, worships the beast. Now we are not to worship man. See a lot of this idolatry going on right now. Keep Jesus Lord, keep him first. If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives a mark on his forehead or upon his hand, he will also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So as we come into these new ages of things that are happening, we have to keep alert, keep aware, because this biometric ID is the international ID. Now remember, this was written in 2009. So we've really moved from this and we've really seen a lot of things happen since 2009. But total global biometric enrollment is the goal. And almost all three elements for that goal are in place. And what he says are the three. First, there's the enrollment, which was the driver's license, the passports, linked to financial data, your social security number. The second is international standards, to facilitate global sharing of personal biometric financial data. Global. Everything's going to be global. You're a global citizen. You're a global financial. Everything's connected. Internet of things. And then the third one is globally linked government corporate databases for surveillance, control, and data sharing. I'm not going to go through all of this, but global data sharing is the final piece of the puzzle to create a total global system of biometric ID and financial control. Now, they were saying how the different kinds of money, uh, it's not good, anything's, you know, any kind of a currency that's not, that's all electric or electronic or cyber, digital, whatever, is, is bad against the dollar. People that said that now are changing their tune. And now they want to go digital, which we knew they want a cashless society. Now, right now, they're letting cash be OK in some places. Um, other countries, I'm hearing more progression there. They want to take away the $100 bills. First, they took away, what, did they have $1,000 bills way back? Yeah. They had many bills back then. Little by little, it's. Uh, you know, now we got 100 is the highest. But if you go and you buy something with cash, which we do, and we were at a place just, and they never have change. It's like, oh, he had to go to what, three different cash registers to just get change for a $100 bill for boots. You know, hello. But they more and more want you to uh, use the digital type systems, which we've been seeing coming more and more. 
but global data sharing is the final piece of the puzzle to create a total global system of biometric ID and financial control. The creation of such a system is the goal of the financial homeland security, according to the spokesman, uh, Robert McConney or something like that. I'll, I'll just quote what he said here and close. Information sharing is appropriate around the world and DHS plans to create a global security envelope of internationally shared biometric data that would permanently link individuals with biometric ID, personal information held by governments and corporations. So what are we supposed to do as Christians? The same thing. <laughs> the same thing we've always been supposed to do. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Ephesians tells us in chapter 6 what we are to do. Having done all to stand, stand. Know the wiles of the enemy. Listen to people that you can trust. There's a lot of people we shouldn't be trusting. In the pulpit and out. So you've got to discern who's telling you the truth. And like I said in the beginning, sometimes it's hard to face truth because you're like, I th that's hard to take. It's, it's hard to take how evil people are, how there's a dark light that people are following. It's the false light appearing as an angelic light. So you've got to discern that. You're going to have to teach yourself, your kids, your family. Is this the Lord or is this coming in the name of the Lord? Or is this really the Lord? And we've had to go through all our teachings through the years. Was this really the Lord? Was this the really a move of the Spirit? Or was this a bunch of stuff that was passed down that was, now we call it the New Apostolic Reformation from the latter reign, from all this stuff. Finding out a lot of these ministers back there were hoodlums. They were thieves. They were crooks. I'm studying a book now from a guy that came out of all this, and I was like, I can't believe these people used the churches as fronts for other things. Well, that's hard to take when your whole life has been built to think you're living for the Lord and you find out some of these teachers were not who they say they are. And it's hard to take when some of these politicians or whoever, the, they're not who they say they are. But there's one we can trust. Jesus is who he says he is. And that's what we stand on. And that's what we believe in, that there is a hope. And what we do now is shine, do what we're supposed to do. Like I read that chapter in Ephesians, serve people, even if they don't give anything back in return. You're doing it as under the Lord. We're not going to get a lot of praise from people in this world. I think about someone I'm actually having to do their funeral on Monday that served beside me for years and years. And, and to my knowledge, she never got paid. All the service, all the conventions she did, all the women's conventions. And I thought back, did anybody ever pay her? Well, she did have another job, of course. Most people do. But just the service is unto the Lord. And that's what we have to do. We have to say, I don't care. I'm going to do this for the Lord. I'm going to still serve God's people. That's always been my heart, my family's heart. I'm going to still serve the Lord. Regardless who comes, who goes. We got to keep our eyes on Jesus, not put our faith and confidence in any preacher, any politician. Read Psalms 2 again, because they can fail us. They didn't die for you, but Jesus did. So Father, we thank you. Sometimes truth is hard, but give us all wisdom. Even if it's hard to take truth and we see people sometimes are not who they say they are. But you let us know that in the end times, evil will get worse. The time is coming that they want to make man into a machine. They want to have all of this technology to a point where they really don't need humans. They want transhumans. And they want to create their own destinies and live forever or enhance themselves to such a point that they don't really need God. Well, we humble ourselves and we say, Lord, we need you. We worship you. In Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. To watch Roberta's messages, you can see her on YouTube at Roberta Morrison. Roberta Morrison 2, the backup channel, living in his presence church on Rumble.
and at the livinginhispresence.org website where you can see all the messages and download them as free audio mp3s. If you would like to contribute to this ministry, go to the main webpage and on the top right is a give button. Thank you and see you next time.